Okay, so this is part two of the video. We did one previously on the solar PV system and the internal electrical part of that. And then this video is about the Alpha ESS battery storage system and the uh, Zappi EV charger. So if you haven't seen part one, then head over to our YouTube channel and have a look for part one. And we'll also include a link to that video in the description for this one. So yeah, enjoy. So here is the Alpha ESS Smile 5. So if you've seen our channel a little bit, you'll notice that we do install quite a few of these. Uh, this is the monster. This is the biggest one we've ever installed. So we've got the Smile 5 inverter here with a 4.6 kilowatt maximum discharge. Um, so it's quite a nice large discharge capacity. We've then got the rest of this uh, is basically battery modules. So we've got just over 27 kilowatt hours of stored capacity here, which is big. And you might be watching this thinking, well, they've only got a five kilowatt, just shot of five kilowatts of solar. Why do they need this much? Since the actual original installation, we came back and added the remaining amount of battery uh, storage. So this is the maximum amount of storage we can have on the Smile 5 system. The reason that the customer wanted this is because they wanted longer in the event of a power cut that their sockets and lights can run for. So a large chunk of this is not used for self-consumption. It's there as a backup system for the circuits in the backup board that we've installed. So <clears throat> this at the minute is 98% charged because the customer can charge it up overnight as well on the off-peak tariff. So this time of year, we're in December, there's not a huge amount of solar generation. We can supplement that with a charge overnight which is really good this system here will always try to use solar power first so it won't just let solar power go back to the grid if it's got space for it to store it in the in the battery modules it will always charge up with the solar power first if it can um, obviously there's not a huge amount of space in this now at 98 percent but there's only 242 watts of solar generation which is probably been gobbled up in the house anyway so yeah it's it's a a huge system you can see it stands about as tall as me which um if you're asking about six foot just short of and um and and yes yeah, so it takes quite a lot of wall space but not a huge amount of floor space so we're only at about 250 mil ish something like that off the wall so it still allows you to have plenty of room in the garage for walking past pulling bins past whatever it's a nice sleek system that is is nicely tucked away basically so you can see it's um it's almost like a wall of batteries is this one and uh, I think it sits there really nicely and like I said doesn't really impact much on the garage space. Okay so let's touch on the UPS side of things here. So UPS basically is uninterruptible power source or power supply. I can never remember which one it is but it doesn't really matter and what happens is the power for those two circuits that I showed you before so the house the upstairs sockets and the house lights those get wired straight through the battery here. Okay, so one limitation of that is that those those two circuits can never draw collectively more than 4.6 kilowatts, which is the inverse capacity basically. So it's not like, say, like a Tesla where it'll it'll switch off the grid, sorry, onto the battery in the event of a power cut. We are limited to the kilowatt capacity, so we can't really put kitchen sockets, car chargers, you know, high load devices, um, electric range ovens, things like that, onto this because it's going to quite easily exceed that 4.6 kilowatt maximum but what that means is that's that ups circuit is wired through this and then back out to those circuits so in the event of a power cut this internally switches and then the power from these batteries can then continue to supply those upstairs sockets and those house lights and keep some sort of power back on um, in the system so it's cheaper than a tesla system if you get older and you can't really get older the teslas now but um, it's cheaper than than that sort of system but it isn't as comprehensive so there's a bit of a trade-off there between that but it's good if you don't need huge amounts of power you just want to keep lights on and some sockets on uh, which is uh, which is what this customer's chosen to do with a chunk of storage capacity we've got three lights here so we've got battery normal and internet 
all solid green so it means everything's fine and we haven't got the fault light on which is good we don't want to ever turn up with a fault light being present and that's it basically i just wanted to touch on the ups side of things just because we get quite a lot of questions on that so next on the hit list for this installation is the my energy zappy that we've installed here so seven kilowatt tethered black my energy zappy we can see here the solar is producing 300 watts and the house is using 300 watts so the house is using everything that the solar is producing so we're not wasting any power the charger is currently set on eco plus mode which means that it will only charge this vehicle up with surplus solar so it won't buy anything in from the grid you can alter that so if you're on eco plus mode you can set a minimum green level i know this customer has set this to 100 percent so that it'll only charge from surplus solar but if you set that minimum green level to 50 percent it would wait until you had a surplus of 700 watts or more and then it would buy the other 700 watts or whatever it needed to get to that 1.4 minimum charge threshold you can just change it on do fast mode which is just charge it with seven kilowatts as, and, and charge the car as quickly as possible or eco mode which would trickle charge the car in preparation trickle charge it at 1.4 kilowatts in preparation for the sun coming out but the eco plus mode at 100 percent green level is the most economic way to to charge the car because you're not buying any power in so that is the the zappy this obviously is connected to uh, an app as well so you've got the mind app and we have integrated this with the battery so we can set a bit of a charge and the battery who wants to receive the the power first and i believe on this installation we've set that as the battery and the car's just here to to charge up when uh, the battery is fully charged which you can see now it pretty much is fully charged um, so that's the mind is happy in a nutshell and uh, yeah the customer loves it so we've also got this rolex seven kilowatt ev charger so this was already installed by a previous company before we arrived uh, so the customer wanted to keep it they didn't want to just get rid of it we applied for permission to put two ev chargers at this property along with all the other kit that you've seen in this video um, this charger here isn't really used that much uh, but it's there for when the customer decides to get a second ev uh, the zappy has load limiting built into it so even if if both if there's two evs charging and there isn't the capacity in the supply for both those chargers to work at seven kilowatts which is 14 kilowatts there's a lot of power that you know that's needed then the zappy will downrate itself to keep the property within the safe parameters i think it's about 80 80 amps on this but we can we can change that so if you've got 100 amp supply we can change that to you know 98 amps or if you've got an 80 we can do 78 amps or 60 we can do 58 amps so we can do all that through the zappy so that's why we we prefer the zappy over over the rolex chargers or really any other chargers out there but it's good to utilize it we don't want to waste it and uh, so that's installed ready for if it's ever needed so now let's have a look at the alpha ess app this is the app that the customer will be using the most really because it gives them an overview of what the solar is doing what the battery is doing and gives them a bit of an idea as to the cost savings that they're making through having this this system in, installed so let's have a look at that now so here we have the app this is the home screen so we've got a bit of an overview here of, what, of what's happening so the top right we've got 379 watts of solar pv power so that's from the solar edge system we've got that the battery is discharging <coughs> and it, that it's 96.8 percent foot charged at the minute so we're nearly fully charged We've then got a profit of £1,296, so that's since installation. That is based on the savings that the customer's making by self-consuming their own power. One thing that the customer's mentioned and that um, we're, we're trying to get sorted with Alpha a little bit, so a little bit of a limitation um, on this, which I'll always be open and honest about, no equipment is perfect, is that um, the customer's mentioned that this doesn't look to include the load shifting cost of shifting the energy to the overnight tariff. So that's something we're working on with Alpha as well. We've got the total investment there, which may or may not be greyed out depending if the customer has allowed us to do that. And that investment is not actually including the the extra battery module. So if the customer has allowed us to have that uh, figure on this video, then there'll have been a part about that earlier on. We've then got the power and statistics folder, which I think the power one is, is blank at the minute just because of some signal issues. But I think that will come up when I, when I press. So if we press on this top section, this is kind of an overview of what is happening in the system. So we can see top left, we've got the PV power of 316 watts 
all this information refreshes after 10 seconds. We've got grid consumption, so actually purchasing 800, oh, there we go, it's gone, just as I said. So we're actually not purchasing anything from the grid at the minute now, and we're also not feeding in anything from the grid. Um, you can see there now the feeding's gone to 70 watts, uh, just because as the, the solar changes, as the load changes in the home, the battery's got to react to that fairly quickly. So you always get this overspill where the battery has to look at what's happening and, and alter what it's doing. So you always get this bit of overspill either way. The battery itself is discharging 334 watts and the load in the home is 629. So basically the battery and the PV added together is, is pretty much that 640 watts, which is what the home is using, meaning we're not purchasing any power, which is, uh, which is fantastic. We then move down the screen, we've got a discharging 96.4 so the battery is, char is charged at 96.4% and it's discharging into the property at the minute. We then come down. Because we haven't done much generation <laughs> today, it's not actually logged it because we've not got a full kilowatt hour yet, but we've also not fed anything in. So self-consumption at the minute is basically nothing because we've, we've not actually generated anything as far as the battery is uh, concerned. Self-sufficiency, we've then got a uh, grid consumption of 14.4 kilowatt hours. That's how much we've purchased from the grid. And because we've not generated anything, that's the total consumption. So again, I'd like to see a little change on this to differentiate between off-peak charging as well because that's what many people that have battery systems this time of year, back end of the year, do. Uh, so even though it's grid consumption, if it's only at 10p, then it's different than if it's at 37p. So grid consumption isn't always bad. It just would be nice on these apps for them to differentiate between peak grid consumption and off-peak grid consumption. But again, we're always trying to make these suggestions to manufacturers to see if we can make these sorts of equipment better. We're not paid by Alpha or anything, so we're, we're allowed to critique it. If we then go to power, so this is now the graph as, what, as to what's been happening in this system. This is for today. So we've got the green section here is what the battery's done. So basically the state of charge of the battery, which is on the right-hand axis. And you can see there that fairly about where that mark is there the battery then starts to take quite a heavy increase in its state of charge to get up to 100 percent. so that is when we've got this brown kind of uh, uh, overlay here as well which is grid consumption so this is when the battery has been scheduled to charge up so it's kicked in there to get the battery to 100 percent. we can see then it starts to tail off probably we're to about here and then that is probably when the peak time ends when you're on a desktop version of this you can actually scroll your mouse over and you can see timestamps so we'd be able to see timestamps on a desktop version of this as to exactly when that was again another slight limitation on the app so you can see there that then the grid consumption basically falls off a cliff because the battery has gone from charging mode to sort of self-consumption mode so now it can go okay i fully charged I'm not in the off-peak rate, I can now discharge that energy into the home. So you can see that the load, which is always present, which is in blue, is there, but we're happy for the load to be supplied by the grid during the off-peak rate because it's only, you know, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but we might see that in a minute, but it's a lot less than the peak rate. So we're happy for the grid to supply that and then let the battery supply that, that power during the day when the customer's paying a, a much higher price. So you can see there that at about this point, we're starting to now slowly discharge the battery into the property. We've then got the PV, which is in yellow, which is just below my marker there. And so you can see now the PV is actually started to kick in as well, which that combined with the battery is covering the, the home's load at the minute. So we can remove certain elements of this if you wanted to. So if you just wanted to see what the solar PV had done, you can click that. If you just wanted to see what the battery has done overlaid with the solar PV, if there's been any feed in, we can see all of that information quite clearly. They've also added some weather um, indicators at the top now so people can start to look at what sort of day it's going to be um, going forward to, for scheduling it to charge and things like that. So there's a lot of different uh, functions that they're always bringing in. Like I say, we're trying to work with them to make the app better all the time. So function, so this is where it'll start to show us a little bit as to what's happening. So we've got charging period number one. So half past midnight to half past four, it's going to charge up and charging period is going to be, the second charge period is just blank because it's the only one charging period. And then we've got a discharging uh, cut off of 4%. So we've actually got UPS uh, reserve enable. So if we actually have a look at that, that's not activated on that yet. So we've got basically the charging period there. I'll see if I can find where the 
uh, prices are, feedback tariff there at 4p, and then we've got our purchase tariff there is at 7.5p, and then we've got purchase tariff number one is at 29p, and that is from that is the peak peak times the rest is all blank because we've only got the two tariff periods but that's the the system we can then start to see what's happening with with the energy at what times and how much that's costing statistics so what we can do now because this system has been installed a little while so if we go to since installation we can then start to see what's been happening so we can see that the total load of the property from when it was installed to now has been 7735 pretty much kilowatt hours which is just what the home's used doesn't matter where that's come from it's just what the home has used we can then see that the sales produced 4244 of that um, or 4244 4, kilowatt hours is what it's produced in total so whether or not that's been put into the battery used directly in the home or sent back to the grid We've then got feed in, so that out of that 4,000 and odd kilowatt hours, we've only actually sent back 440 kilowatt hours. No matter how big your battery is, you're always gonna send something back because the battery's got to react and you always have that, that slight amount of, of export, so you can't get away from that. We've then got grid consumption. So this is how much the property has bought in. So basically they've paid for 3,931 kilowatt hours, which predominantly is gonna be overnight because of the way that this battery charges up so the customer has had this battery charging up overnight for quite a while again that's why i'd like to see a secondary layer to this as off peak so that the customer can offset well that's how much i've purchased at peak that's how much i've purchased off peak but again we're trying to suggest those sort of things so basically that cost that that amount and that amount um has equated to the amount of energy that the home has used so basically they've paid for 3931 kilowatt hours but they've actually used 7735 so they've only paid the cost of 3931 for the usage of 7735 so you can see there that that's the same you can see just by the heights of these these bars the difference so that you know that is my maths so we're getting close to paying for about half of what we've used so about a 50 percent saving on that and like i said that is including the off-peak charging rate so that that isn't all at 30 pence whatever the peak rate was some of that is at 7p so that's why i would like to see that change a little bit to make that a bit clearer but you can see there there's been a significant saving um, on this system just just through not even a year so the year one's going to be identical because it's only been installed a year but you can break this down per month so you can see how we've been performing per month so we can change the date ranges there if we wanted to so if we went there to there we can see we can see that the feed in 12 kilowatt hours 9.6 that was quite a big one 168 166 and then we're back down at 10.8 20.4 so you can start to see a lot of information here and how your system's performing we've then got the self-consumption and self uh, self-sufficiency so how reliant you've been on the batteries and the solar to provide all your power um, but again off-peak charging has kind of kind of skews that a little bit because you are buying in a decent amount of power to charge the batteries but you know we have to work with what we've got at the minute and that's about it for the solar uh, for the alpha battery system app uh, but you can see it's it's got there's certainly some improvements that we suggest could be made as a whole i think it's a pretty solid app and it's showing us quite a lot of information as to what's happening in the property and it's got quite a nice display so hopefully if they make those slight adjustments with the off-peak charging then it'll make it even better but these things are always improving and hopefully that comes in but that is basically everything on the alpha ess app so that's it what an absolute monster of a install this one is um, but you can see here that we can fit quite a lot of equipment in quite a small area so hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as ever please like subscribe send it to your mates whatever you want um, to help the channel grow it really helps us put more and more time into putting uh, more and more videos out there thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one